This is the landscape of old silver mines outside of Tonopah, Nevada, where I am traveling with a group of people to an unknown location to look for petrified wood. Look at that wood. Right there. Hey everybody, and welcome back to Ellie Knows Rocks. We're standing on a hill that is supposed to be covered with petrified wood. We just traveled up that massive, massive road. We are headed up this hill right now. <laughs> the truck is bouncing to go look for petrified wood. I hope it's real petrified wood and not just Jasper. We shall see. Oh, and looks like this car in front of us is having just a tad bit of trouble. Come on, little guy. But yeah, we're headed up this. The truck's in four wheel drive, so hopefully it's gonna stay in four wheel drive. Thank you guys so much for joining me on this adventure. And let's go see what we find. up that really sketchy road and we're already finding pieces of stuff on the ground it's chalcedony right here that was that's gonna fluoresce like an orange color this is chalcedony and so i've heard that the bigger stuff is up the hill so that's where we're headed up there we want the bigger stuff oh but look there's like big old chunks of it down here it's like that squirrel moment where you start to see things everywhere all of a sudden. <gasps> oh, look at that. Oh, those bandings. Jasper banding can happen when like really soft sands have been solidified quite quickly. So this could possibly be wood, but most likely it's Jasper. Oh, look at this. That cast right there, that could be a small limb cast. That's pretty cool. Look, y'all, a trumpet plant on the side of the hill with tons of chalcedony. There's not really any heavy minerals here, and heavy metals, that kind of thing. So it's a lot of common opal, which is this right here. And then you've got bands of chalcedony. It is not petrified wood. The way that it formed, chalcedony must have formed in the vugs of this clay ash rhyolite layer. The reason this is puzzling me is because you don't usually see chalcedony like this. You usually see chalcedony in harder volcanics and not in soft, ashy volcanics. Chert, however, can form in soft sediment, but this doesn't appear to be chert. The grains are far too fine, and this is much more glassy and vitreous than most chert is. Now, in order for there to be petrified wood here, this would have had to have been a small forest that eventually got covered with some form of ash flow or pyroclastic flow to completely smother out the wood so that it was void of oxygen so it couldn't rot. And then silica rich fluid percolates in through the soft sediment, dissolving the minerals around it, and then impregnating the wood, eventually petrifying it. But I'm gonna walk down the hill because after observing at higher locations, it really does look like down below would probably be the better place for petrified wood. All right, I am finally finding a little bit of more visible petrified wood. Check this out. So you can see these guys here, the real small ones, and this. This was, wasn't as big as I thought it was, but that is the petrified wood out here. Oh, look, this guy's got little crystals on it. That's pretty cool. In the bucket. <laughs> oh, look at this one with the rings in it. Yeah, very cool. Okay, There's wood everywhere, little shards of it down here. Look at that wood. Right there. Wow. That's a good one. Oh man, I'm thinking this, that might've been some kind of a cast. That is beautiful. Wow. That is stunning. Look at this guys. A limb cast. Flat piece. Let's take this out. How pretty that is. The 
this guy right here. Little pieces. These are fantastic. This is way better than just Cal Sydney. Everybody is searching once again. Look at these pieces. Almost there's a ring. That's a that's a limb right there. Tiny limb. Isn't that amazing? You can really see the rings in it. This is probably part of one. This might be a portion of one. Wow. Some of this stuff is really great. I can't believe it. Let's <laughs> see what's over here. <gasps> Look. That there. Very pretty. Really pretty. Let me get my bucket. It's <gasps> a big old piece. I don't know how deep this is gonna go back. Just look at the banding on it. Like, wow. Look, it's got, it's like a quarter log. You can see the center and then all the rings as they go out. Wow. These are some of the pieces of the petrified wood that I picked up. have been cleaned off and I'm gonna pick a couple to cut look at the limb cast in there actually what I think this is is this is the heart and this is the outer layers of the tree and unfortunately it's just not completely whole look at those colors And this is pretty awesome. This is, I think, is a whole root wad. And it's got just pieces of it kind of everywhere. You can see like centers and what looks like little branches all over this piece. That, this would be, I think, quite the feat to cut open, but I bet it would be beautiful center another center i'm going to cut the back of this one off i'm going to also cut these two small pieces right here a lot of the petrified wood had opal running through it along with chalcedony so it was pretty easy to cut overall but to be honest I was extremely excited when I got them cut open and actually saw what was inside. Most of the wood. I am in no way a fossil expert at all, but I absolutely love petrified wood. It's one of my favorite fossils and it's a very cool mineral. Something unique about this is not only does it have opal, but it's also been agatized. So you can see the bands of white chalcedony, but the pattern is very unique. I'm not sure what type of wood this is. If anybody knows, please leave it in the comments because my brain's a little shaken right now. This next piece is kind of interesting as well. There's a lot of agate throughout it, a lot of opal on the outside and you can see the texture and the cracking. But again, it's an odd texture for petrified wood, but it's very clear. You can see the structure, you can see the rings. Blown away, I'm absolutely loving this stuff. And I'm overly shocked with how it's been petrified. This piece looked super unique. You can see the wood there in the middle, but the outside of it, it looks like some form of brain material. I mean, if I didn't know better, I'd say it was something like a stromatolite, but wait. Oh my gosh, as I'm saying this to myself now, doesn't that look stromatolite-ish? I don't know, it is super creepy, but for some reason that brain light material looks stromatolite-ish, right? So does this one, check it out. This one has to be one of my favorite pieces that I opened up. All right, as I was doing this voiceover, I had like a revelation, so I had to pause and actually look stuff up. These are stromatolites, 
on the outside of the wood. Turns out after a little bit of research, the cyanobacteria didn't form around every piece of wood that was, had to have been in a shallow sea at one point in time. I know this is blowing my mind because in order to get stromatolites, you have to have a warm shallow sea, which most of Nevada was covered with water at one point in time, which would make sense. Like you can see with this piece of petrified wood, it's just the wood, there's no stromatolite material around it. But then with this one, check this out. You can see that it's got the wood in the middle. You can see the rings down at the very bottom, but then you have that layered cyanobacteria creating the stromatolite on top of the tiny core. My mind's freaking out. I had no idea that this was going to be that cool. That is it for the petrified wood site. And it's hard for me to leave right now because it's still everywhere. But this was fantastic. Thank you guys so much for joining me and I'll see you in the next one.